I've been wondering how to give the heading of my sharing this morning. But what I'm feeling the Holy Spirit leading me to give my heading. But you can give yours, depending with where you are with God this moment of time. Or depending on how applicable uh, the sharing of today will uh, place you in line with the word of God and in your service and calling of God in your life. Bwana sifuwe sana. I've given it occupy till I come. Occupy. Sijui na wangapi wa shaona kuna matatu ingine inakujaga hapa hivi na inaito occupy. Na kama we ni mtu wa sabasaba inakuwaga hata na huko. Occupy. Ina occupy the root. Iki occupy the root inabeba watu and at the same very time inabeba mizigo mamadizi ya kurete kwa soko. Ina occupy. Uko mashambani ina occupy. Simuranga ni mashambani. It occupies. Iki kuja hapa town utaona ime occupy root 44. God has called us to occupy. Amen. Na hata uh, you see, the beauty is when you are given the opportunity to occupy, you have to kujijaza. I don't know. Kujijaza. Sawa sawa. Kujijaza. That where God has placed you, regardless how you look like, the, 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 the command is occupy the way you are. Bwana asifuwe sana. Hiyo matatu, unaweza kusema nzire mambo samani. So it fits so well in the villages kwa kubeba mamizigo. Fits so very well. When it comes to town, hata kama kuna zile zinaitu wanganya. Hmm? Hmm? Zile, ziko, zile za miondoko. Yani ikona screen kama ile. The music. Yenye ikondani. You feel it will feel misplaced. But it has to occupy. Bwana asifuwe sana. And more or less the same to us. That illustration may help us to uh, probably uh, uh, help us understand the call of God in us. And I want to bring to us a story written in the book or in the book of Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. And this is Jesus who was impressed so very much by offering done by a, a poor widow. Now, you, you can now imagine when you are a widow and then you are poor. And then she offered two copper coins. She just offered in the midst of the congregation that had gathered in presence of Jesus. And uh, could you just close your eyes, if you would close your eyes and imagine if uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto would come to this uh, congregation. And by the way, to uh, invite to Kuja too. Because you know, it's, it, will, it will reach out to him. Right? You, you just close your eyes and imagine if His Excellency would come to our congregation, the number of people would gather here. You know, we would feel here, outside, and even in the tent, in the overflow and in the tent. Now, the scenario now here is, Jesus was not, not like the president now, but Jesus was in that congregation. And then, we are told of this poor, poor widow, poor widow, was spotted giving her service. Poor widow. Jesus noticed her offering. 
amidst the many people who had gathered in that congregation, Jesus noticed the two small copper coins offered by this uh, woman. We are even not told her name, but we are just told she was poor, but she offered. The word poor denotes like you are not appreciated very much. Amen? You are not appreciated very much. You are not regarded so very much. And if anything, you can't be given the first, the second, the third, if people are being seated in terms of recognition. But then we are told, and the Bible records, her service was recognized. Why? Because she offered, she served wholeheartedly. Just like the way the pig and the hen are said, that the pig surrenders everything while the hen will just lay the egg. And that's, we, 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 when, when, when God calls us to occupy, that should be, that should be our motivation. She surrendered to God. Another scenario we read from the Second Kings chapter 17 and verse 24. We read the case of prophet Elijah. Elijah is told by God to go. I don't know whether the media team, you can give us uh, that scripture. Let's tuambiwe hatu kusoma. First Kings 17 and verse 8, if it's there. 8 to 24. Then the word of God came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, Hey, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, Wow, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bean, and a little oil in a jar, and, and see... I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat and die. Frustration. That we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on earth. We can stop at that. We see a scenario where uh, the man of God seeks help from a poor lady. A frustrated lady, a lady who is just about to give up. And it's more serious, very serious. Like when you have come to the end of yourself, it's like after this meal, we will die. We'll have nothing else left. We'll just but die. And I'm, I'm trying to imagine a scenario whereby maybe she had borrowed to the neighbors, or she had ran dry of her savings and everything. She had exhausted everything she thought of, save for God. This woman 
had exhausted all areas she would thought about save for God. Bwana asifue sana. Tell your neighbor, save for God. Ispokuwa mungu tu. Mwambia jirani yako. Ispokuwa mungu tu. Yani she had tried every other place apart from God. The only where, the only place she had not turned to was to God. But you, we can see frustration in her eyes. Even in her speech. It's speaking volumes that they didn't have anything else and they were ready to die. Friends, we are called to serve. And you serve where you are. You serve where you are. But more often than not, we encounter seasons. We encounter seasons. When we encounter seasons like what we are seeing in the, in the case of this um, woman, she's in a season whereby it's like she's coming to the end of herself. It's like they have lived so very well with plenty. She had enough oil. She had enough hunger. But then she has come. And at the same very time we see Elijah also. Going to seek help. It is good to go and seek help. Because you see the two scenarios Elijah is asked of God to go. Elijah is asked of God to go. But then now here we see a lady who has not asked from God, but then she has, she, she, she's just but herself. You know, like she has so much depended on herself, her efforts, which are frustrating her. Because she's losing the battle. But we see the man of God being sent to her. And so, we are not alone. In our calling, we are not alone. 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 Like, when you ask yourself, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are we born again? Why are we here today? And a scenario in First Kings chapter 19, verse 9 to 14, I don't know whether you can give us that scripture. We see Elijah again. Here, he's now on the receiving end. We have seen Elijah being sent by God, isn't it? And here, could we read? And there, he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of God came to him, and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous, the Lord God of hosts. I have been very zealous. And I have been committed. I have records. I have testimony upon testimonies about my faithfulness and my serving. Buona asifu sana. I don't know whether you come, to your, you, you come to such a situation yourself. Don't remove it. Yeah. So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they seek 
to take my life. Bwana asifue sana. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains. Let's, let's just stop there because of the interest of time, but you can read it through when you have time. We see Elijah now uh, like relying on his efforts. Relying on his efforts. And like the first widow that just served God wholeheartedly and, and longed for God. And just unlike the widow who had just some little fly and some little oil left. And if they would have given it out, it's like they were out to go and die. And then now here we see a man of God. Buona sifu sana. A woman of God in our midst this day. Who have seen the faithfulness of God. Because Elijah witnessed the provision of the miraculous provision of God of oil and flour to the lady who was just about to eat the last meal and die. Bwana sifue sana. He witnessed so. But then here we see the same very person now running away because he has served and it's like the children of Israel, the people that you have sent me to, have given up. They no longer wait on God. They no longer trust in God. They no longer believe in the man of God. They no longer believe in the ministry. They no longer believe in the miracles that they have seen. And it's like he is giving up. Remember our topic that I, you know, it's like, done, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. God calls us to occupy regardless. Occupy. Serving. Serving. And God is asking, why don't, why don't you hear? It's a question he's asking Elijah. Why don't you hear? Why don't you see? And it's like he has reasons. Do we give reasons? Maureen, mimi nimekuwa muombezi sana. Lakini bwana, hawasikii hawa watu wa kujagi maombi. Hata mimi sasa wachana naye. Hata mimi siendi. Mimi tu kikundi ya evangelism. Tulikuwa mia moja tukienda do to do tulibakia moja peke yangu ni mimi tu lakini hata sasa nimechoka hii kutembelea kutembelea kujulia watu hali nimekuwa nikiwatembelea nikiwatembelea ni ni mimi tu hawakuji kunitembelea sasa i'm giving up that's a lie from the devil let's hear let's learn to hear from god that we go through season. It's good we understand we go through seasons. We go through seasons. We go through situations and circumstances in our service to one another. Because our service to one another is exactly our service to God. It resonates so very well with why God redeemed us. Why Jesus died at the cross of Calvary for our sake. And as, as we have sung, Jesus, oh Jesus, the woman that you saved, the woman that you died for, has come to worship you. And would, wouldn't that be our testimony every other time? Wouldn't that be the testimony of each one of us that the man that you died for, the man that you, 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 you delivered, the man that you provided for when he was just about to give up, the man that you lifted from nothing, the man that you brought from that village, huh? placed him in the city 
in the sun to occupy is here to worship you, is here to honor you. But we turn around to give up simply because what one Nairobi hawasiki, what one my neighbors wangu hawasiki, what one church yetu hawasiki, what one wakijiji yetu hawasiki. Ah, may the Lord help us. Because we have been called to occupy. To occupy till he come. And you know what? We have testimonies upon testimonies. We are not alone. The children of Israel, whom we are part and type and shadow, of how God deliberately took time to deliver from the hands of the enemy and promised them and never abandoned them, but was in their midst, regardless of the challenges that they faced along the way to their promised land. May the Lord help us so very much. Hmm. Frustrations. I want to see Two scenarios here. And before I bring that scenario, let's read uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 to 7. Kindly give us. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God may, had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said? What? You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took its, its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her and then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to, Abraham, to Adam and said to him, Where art thou? Let's do number 10. So he said, I heard, I heard your voice in the, garden, in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 11. And he said, Who? told you that you were naked. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Let's stop at that, but you can continue. Uh, we see the two scenarios here. God has placed uh, Adam and Eve at the Garden of Eden and gave them the opportunity to serve, to offer their services to that garden. But then we see a scenario whereby Adam has gone contrary from the will of God, from the agreement, and they have sinned. And so Adam and Eve are running away as a result of their actions. They have sinned, and so they are trying to run away. And you see, God always comes to us, where are you? Why are you running? Who told you? 
And there are good questions to pose at and to ask ourselves when we are so very much frustrated, when we, are, we just feel we are so very tired, when people are not responding and when every other person is against us, not because of our, that we have sinned, like Adam and Eve, no. But we are frustrated because, like, just like Elijah, the Israel, the children of Israel, your people, wants to kill me. Or they want to kill me. Not because of any apparent reason. No. You are doing your very good service and ministry. You are responding. But then you like, want to throw the towels. You want to give up. It's like, Lord, I will not occupy any longer. The challenges are just too much. Remember the woman who offered herself her, her two copper coins. Remember the widow who offered the last meal. And Elijah here is running away. He's not seeking help from God. It's like he doesn't want to occupy. It's like he's giving up his office of a prophet. Sasa, if a prophet would give up, na teacher nai, na evangelist nai, na pastor nai, na apostle nai. It's good question. There are good questions to ponder. So that, because we'll always fall in seasons, just like the way we experience rain season, dry seasons. I mean, like, one time, I think I'll visit. Yes, I'll visit. One time, God willing. Uh, and we experience snow. We experience winter. Winter naskiaga ni barafu. Yani unakaa kama umeko kwa fridge. Um, summer. Huh? Yani jua inakaa. Yani kuna kaa kama worse than trukana. I mean situations and circumstances, they fall, they come, so we'll always find ourselves in. And so, we ought not to give up. And so, Elijah is giving up just because he's frustrated. My sister and my brother. Once in a while, as we respond to the call of God, we'll be frustrated. We'll feel no one patting your back because of what you have done. Instead, they will speak ill about you. But that we should not open the door for us to run away. But we ought to stand uh, strong. So, besides Elijah's frustrations, and he has not sinned, his, God had to speak to him. And for Adam and Eve, God had to deal with them so that he reconciles them. He covers them. He slaughtered and covered their nakedness. He covered their sin. And just like the Adam of old, by one man, sin came. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came for, for our sake. Time would not fail me. Time actually would fail me to... Uh, uh, give more illustration for us to understand, and especially for me to, 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 to understand. Jesus also was frustrated. Jesus was also frustrated. There was a man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5 and verse 1 through to 9, we will not look at it. There was a man who laid down there, not serving, not serving. But because of his condition, he just sat there, waiting for someone to help him. And when Jesus took help to him, 
was like he just started giving excuses. I didn't have a man to hold my hand. I, when the spirit come to star, I don't have someone to push me. But Jesus has come. The Holy Spirit has come to push us so that we'll not just stay idle, but we'll move on with our blessings. So, when we are first faced with challenges, just like this man at the pool of Bethesda, we often, the, the likely thing we want to run away, to shy off. You could, you, and it happens. Unakuwa wewe ni asha mzuri. Unakuwa wewe ni mtu wa keyboard mzuri. Mtu wa choir mzuri. Mama wa kanisa mzuri. Kijana wa kanisa mzuri. But when frustrations and challenges come, Bwana asifiwe sana. We often feel like running away or shying away and running away. But the, the, the command remains, occupy till I come. Bwana asifiwe sana. Why? Because of fear. Because of fear. And fear, we are told it's evidence, false evidence appearing real. And so, during challenges, let's stand firm. During challenges, may we stand firm. And as I come to close, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have uh, some points that we'll ponder on that can help us stay uh, alert during challenging moments in our service. Number one is feeling uh, unreliable. Vile tunaskia. Feeling are uh, unreliable. The Bible wants us not to trust our perceptions as in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Feelings are unreliable. Feelings are unreliable. Uki feel ati watu hawakutaki. Uki feel like Elijah. Feelings are unreliable. Proverbs uh, 3 and verse 5. And they come from many, uh, many, 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 many angles, feelings. Unajua uki, Triple H, ukisikia nja, kukasirika, inakuja ina, ina tu, inakuja tu, inajirete tu. Hmm? Yani, ukiasium, hatu kukutambua. Hmm? Yani, hatu kukutambua. Hmm? Feelings zinakuja tu. Bwana asifuwe sana. Hmm? Zinakuja tu. So feelings are unreliable. Bwana asifuwe sana. Number two. Life has both good and bad. Life has both good and bad. And we can refer from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, chapter three verse 1 to 6. Life has both good and bad, you will be there. Reminds us that life is a series of opposite actions. There is time for everything under heaven. Time to plan and time to... We need these tough seasons to help us uh, to grow, if you observe, uh, to grow. You know, a season um, where you are pruned, you look ugly. Have, I don't know whether you have ever seen a pruned uh, coffee bushes or tea bushes or fruit trees when it has been pruned. You know, um, if it is tea, it looks ugly. The green is gone. But as it is said, it is said, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Buona sifuwe sana. When the farmer prunes, and then you go visiting, you'd think, shamba yake haina nini, haina anything, it is dry. But he knows, wait until the rain come, and the, the, the bushes will sprout, and he will have more tea if it was tea. Bwana sana. 
Bwana atukuzwe. Number 3. You can still um, uh, and and uh, let 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 look at this scripture. Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. Nataka hiyo kusitiza. Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. We are given a number of uh, a number of names in that. Zingine hata kusoma proko pro philip at least philip tunaijua tuna vizuri pro pro prochorus ni nikano timon paminas nikaras bwana asifue sana yani those guys are there bwana asifue sana just like me and you could be here bwana atukuzwe just as me and you could be in our home churches in our marketplace lakini isikuwe ni jina tu amen isikuwe ni nini ni jina tu bwana asifiwe ati sasa uko pale tu utaki kusema utaki nini watu wasikuseme let's sit occupy bwana tukuzwe tell your friend occupy number three. dry seasons help build our character Dry seasons help build our character. God uses dry seasons to teach us to live by faith. When feelings are gone, he wants to build perseverance and maturity in us. Amen. Dry seasons can feel like desert seasons. Sisi sisi tunaendaka kuhubiri Turkana. At the moment we have like today now, we have 30 Sunday schools that will be served with porridge and because of hunger and drought in Trukana we'll have like 3000 children in different villages that will flock to many village churches in Trukana and they will be taught the word of God laying very sure foundation for them and God gave us that burden for the last 6 years we've been doing it through friends bwana asifiwe sana at times inakuwa very hard unasikia simu pastor unga sasa imeisha hatuna unga ya sande unasikia sasa si hata nyinyi mtafu i mean you feel like and last month we it's been our prayer that god takes us to support church growth in marsabit and last month we started in two villages kijiji moja inaitwa kurkum it is a deliverance church uh, there is a deliverance church with some missionaries there now they they, they will serve um uji today the, and the number of children has continued to increase we this, we started with 64 last sunday there were 107 in one village in another village um Uh, called bagasi we started with 48 children last last sunday they were 98 bwana tukuzwe and those children by god's grace if provision will continue flowing those children will start coming for sunday school being taught the word of god they are you know being led the way they should go and when they are old the lord depart god making disciples god making uh, ministers of the gospel in their villages simply because bwana sifuiwe we have we have we have agreed and in, when it is becomes too hard for us we don't throw the towel our time is almost up number four, you are serving god not just people you are serving god not just people god is our ultimate boss we serve others because we are serving him our motivation our why determines how we do what we do and we can look a reference from the book of luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 verse 13 you, know, you remember the the, the 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 one who came back bwana tukuzwe sana number 5 your ministry makes an eternal difference your ministry your calling 
where you serve, Bwana asifiwe sana, makes an eternal difference. What you do, that little thing that you do, makes an eternal difference. What you do, what you do, you know the way you encourage someone, when you visit someone, when you encourage someone to love God, it has eternal, it makes an eternal difference. Bwana atukuzwe sana. And that, what we are doing in Trukana, it's making eternal difference because the grace of God uh, is, 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 is upon us. But uh, more often than not, when um, challenges come, we like, like giving up. And it's like, did we hear well from God? Number six, you will have eternal reward. Amen? And Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. Paul writes... Uh, in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 17 to 18, about eternal rewards. The last but not least is, you will spend forever with Jesus. When our ultimate is that the one you saved has come to honor you. The one that you healed has come to worship you. That would be our ultimate, that you will spend forever uh, eternity with Jesus Christ. Amen? Feelings are unreliable. Life has good and bad time, uh, times. Dry seasons help to build our character. You are serving God, not just people. Your ministry makes an et eternal difference. You will have eternal reward. You will spend forever with Jesus. Bwana asifuwe sana. Would you find, would you find your place to minister? Would you never give up? Could we pray our Father and our God? In our calling, in our seasons of life, we face challenges. Our desire is that we will be available regardless regardless of what we'll face, oh God, will be available to serve you. Lord, have your way. Have your way. And you could be in our midst. And you don't know exactly what because you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. And this could be another moment. You'll speak to any of the leaders and you'll be helped. Our Father and our God, have your way minister to us, that we'll be able to apply what you have ministered to us this day. It's our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you so very much.